Well, here it is, folks. Last bale in the hay meta because the next move is the Dunbar hoss herd here is going to the halfway nine acres. <laughs> this is going to be the fun part is uh, I've got a crew coming. It's uh, going to be pretty exciting. Going to do something different. We've got to get this herd right here that's been staged here since uh, early July. First time I had bison on this pasture. We've got to get them through the burn unit. Okay. We got to cut through, right through the burn unit, cross the creek, and get them to the nine acres and start moving and rounding up these bison and move them all the way to the very front to get ready for our fall 2023 roundup slash working. So, with that being said, this is the last bill of hay, and then it's it's on, basically. And uh, I can't wait for you guys to see what we're going to do different this time. We're not just going to use the ATV to move these guys. We've got something new coming. It's going to be fun. Marissa, Cole, and some other friends will be here to be a part of this move. And hopefully it all works, you know. I mean, to get some bison to cut through the middle of a pasture that hadn't been grazed in several, several months you know, to get to another pasture could be a challenge. So let's roll it out. Dunbar. Hey buddy. Pretty girl. You're a mess though. You're a hot mess. <laughs> Marissa and I have been getting everything ready for the roundup. I say everything, but we are starting the process to get, uh, to get our pins set up and everything. We're gonna do some things different this year, and uh, we got some more freestanding panels. We've been setting up our pins, and uh, that's what we're doing today. And then the next thing is right now, we're waiting on Mark. Mark called, our horse guy, hooked us up with this girl, and uh, he's bringing a buddy over, and Cora is gonna get her hooves tripped. So we're gonna do that, and then continue working, doing our thing, um, but, we're gonna work this herd. We're gonna work all of our animals here at the Ponderosa. December, or the first weekend of December, sometime is when we're gonna do it. So, excited about that. We're gonna make some changes, try to do some things better this year, but we're excited. That is roundup day. And so the process is gonna start really soon. And Marissa and I today 
are doing that are starting that process of uh, moving panels around and getting pins set up um, chickens are so chatty because we're gonna start this process and before you know it it'll be roundup time and working them so uh, and that's always a good show so we'll just wait on mark mark gets here and uh, guys trimming the hooves I think it's his cousin um, they're coming we'll uh, get you taken care of she's doing so much better though by the way take you take a look at these uh, wounds here so you guys can see completely healed over there this one you can't even hardly tell it's amazing how awesome these look and um, it's just scabbing over a little bit you can't even tell there's anything hardly there it's amazing what hydrotherapy can do proud of our girl so anyways let's get to work because we are a month away from roundup and getting everything ready is so important beforehand will hopefully reduce the stress when the working time comes we're moving our blue feeder to get it set up to where we're going to be able to make two pins the big feeder here which holds approximately a little over 14,000 pounds of our feed so we're going to get it set here with the skid steer then once we get the feeder set it's time to bring it in our panels and get them set that we can build around our feeder you'll see it in just a second but before we start moving panels the feed truck arrived so we scheduled the feed truck which is only about a 10 minute travel time for this truck well since the truck showed up it's time to go ahead and fill up the feeder hey, Marissa. yeah i use a shovel to clean out some of the feed areas where uh, water gets trapped every now and then and some of the feed that's left over uh, from this spring so we clean it out and get it ready and then we can go ahead and start filling up this big feeder this feeder is a skid feeder some of these type of feeders come on wheels. With this Oklahoma Pride feeder, we just went ahead and did it on skids. We weren't gonna move it a whole lot. We keep it in our corral 365 days a year. So why are we filling up the big blue feeder? And what do we use the big blue feeder for? Well, this Oklahoma Pride feeder is used for several things. One, in the fall, when we start catching our calves and we start the weaning process, which is less than a month away, one, we use it for our weaning calves to feed them through the winter get on their feet and go through the weaning process and stay healthy and recover from the stress that they take on their weaning process two in this situation what we're doing is getting it filled up for and moving it and positioning it as we're about to round up our bison and bring them all the way up to the front it's a great way to help pull the bison in during roundup when they see the blue feeder they want to go to it because they know what's in it so it's used also as an attractant to kind of trap them or get them to come into the pens a little bit easier than instead of having to push them we can pull them just by using the feeder they're only trapped in the big corral for a day or two until we work them and then we let them back out into the pasture so they're not here very long they're not eating a ton of feed sometimes we actually shut the feeder off from them and we give them their normal cubes like we always do So now we got the feeder set, feeders filled up. It's time to get the pin set and my wife's gonna help me do it. If you wanna know one of the best equipment or tools that you can use on a bison ranch, these freestanding panels are the biggest difference. We love using these freestanding panels. If you don't know what a freestanding panel is, that's what I'm moving around here. Every year we buy usually about 10 or so. As we get bigger and get more animals, we need more freestanding panels. Here's the reason why. These are freestanding, they have legs on them. They're 24 foot long and they're heavy duty. The uprights and all the piping is two and three eighths pipe with sucker rod in between. Very durable, easy. They are heavy, so you will need a tractor or a skid steer, which we use all the time. Easy to use with a skid steer, mobile. If you're not ready to build your pins yet and have them stationary, you can use your freestanding panels and the great thing about them is you can move them around and adjust them to however you like them. If you need a temporary pin, you can use these panels. I'll leave a link in the description for you. This is the same place I order all of our freestanding panels from. They do a great job and they even deliver. But we use these freestanding panels all the time and I know lots of bison ranchers 
use these panels along with cattle people as well. So we're getting them lined up here. Building this pen, you'll see in a week or two why we're doing this and you'll see after me explaining, we're gonna use this, it's gonna be a multi-use pen, not only for our handling and our roundup, but for other reasons as well. We'll bring that to you in the future. I wanna thank my wife for helping me line up these panels. They're not perfect. She was trying to help me as much as she could to try to get them as straight as we could. Just a little bit. Good. Now it's time for Cora to get her hooves trimmed. Keaton and Mark are here. You worked with her some, Keaton, but I guess not enough, huh? Dusty, I think you need to you need to work on. Uh, well, she's yep. just being cantankerous. Yep. Because all we've done is like hold it up and set it down. Oh, just doll to the nines. You got some glitter you can throw on them? I mean, I'm not. She needs them. Be free. They look good. Yeah, pretty, they look totally different. Those are show feet now. Ready for the show ring? Thank you, Keaton. Oh yeah. I'm talking about. Keaton did a great job on Cora's hooves, even got a little sparkle to them now. Last but not least, we got to give you guys an update on the newborn 32 calf. Well, we finally got a little bit of rain. It got soggy and wet and cold, which is what we needed. We definitely have needed the moisture, but I was rolling out a bell of hay and was able to get up close to the calf and get some good footage for you. He is nice and fluffy, healthy, and every time I see him, he's on mama, which is a great thing. The 32 cow is a great mama. Thank you guys for watching us. Big Joe!